Here we have utilised large neuroimmunology laboratory data from patients tested for autoimmune encephalitis to determine the frequency of detection of autoimmune encephalitis antibodies and their age and sex associations. My name is Dr. Amy Quinchock. I'm a staff neurologist at the Cleveland Clinic, specialising in autoimmune neurology and multiple sclerosis. The title of this paper is Autoimmune and Paraneoplastic Encephalitis Antibody Biomarkers the frequency, age, and sex associations. And it will appear in the Mayo Clinic proceedings in March of 2022. Autoimmune and paraneoplastic encephalitis are uncommon disorders with several antibody biomarkers that are used to aid diagnosis. The incidence has been estimated in a population-based study from the Olmsted County over a 10-year period to be 0.8 per 100,000 person years. Because of the rarity of these disorders, it is difficult to obtain large patient samples. Here we have utilized large neuroimmunology laboratory data from 40,000 patients tested for autoimmune encephalitis over a two year period at Mayo Clinic to obtain a big picture perspective of this population. We utilize this large sample to evaluate for frequency, age and sex associations of these autoimmune encephalitis antibodies. Firstly, from this sample, we were able to evaluate the frequency of detection of these autoimmune encephalitis antibodies to determine the overall proportional distribution amongst children and adults tested. Amongst adults tested for autoimmune encephalitis with autoimmune encephalitis antibodies detected in either serum or CSF, the most frequent antibody detected was NMDAR IgG. And this was present in 40% of the patients who are CSF positive for a neural antibody uh, diagnostic of autoimmune encephalitis. This was followed by GAD65 IgG and LJ1 IgG. Of children that were tested for autoimmune encephalitis who were seropositive, we identified that NMDAR IgG was the most commonly detected antibody, followed by MOG IgG and GAD65 IgG. MOG IgG formed 32% of children that were seropositive. This highlights the emerging role of MOG IgG as a serum antibody biomarker for autoimmune encephalopathy in children. In children in cerebral spinal fluid, NMDAR IgG was by far the most common neural antibody detected in 88% of those that were positive. This was followed by GAD65 in 9%. It is important to note that MOG IgG was not, was not tested in CSF for this study. Secondly, from this large sample, we were able to determine age and sex associations with autoimmune encephalitis antibodies. We found that age less than 20 years was associated with NMDAR IgG and MOG IgG detection, whereas age greater than 65 years was associated with the detection of GABA-B receptor IgG, LJ1 IgG, CASPA-2 IgG and ANA-1 IgG, also known as anti-WHO. For some of these neural antibodies, such as GABA-B receptor and ANA-1 or anti-WHO, this likely represents the known paraneoplastic association of these neural antibodies. From this population, we were also able to determine sex associations with autoimmune encephalitis antibodies. In this study, we demonstrated that NMDAR IgG and GAD65 IgG were associated with female sex, and LJ1 was associated with male sex. This association with NMJR IgG with female sex has been previously described and is likely attributable to the known association with ovarian teratoma. The pathophysiology that underlies the association of female sex with GAD65 IgG and male sex with LJ1 IgG is not yet well understood. In summary, utilizing large neurology laboratory data can provide a big picture perspective of the age and sex associations as well as the frequency of autoimmune encephalitis antibodies detected in patients tested for autoimmune encephalitis. These findings may aid in the clinical prognostication and provide inference to the pathophysiology of these disorders. I invite you to read the article for further details on this topic. Thank you very much. We hope you found this presentation from the content of our website valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us 
Our home page is www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you'll find access to information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about Healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.